What's happening, fandoms? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we react to music videos and shows. Today, we're going over to new rock stars for the Loki season two, episode three breakdown. And I don't know about you guys, but I love the Loki concept. I love the Loki characters and the character growth and the mysteries, but the showrunners have me lost. In episode three, I don't understand where they're going. I don't know what we were meant to pull out of this uh, story they're telling. I, they're, cl they're clearly intimating that Kang, who was killed at the end of time, is a different person than the one that they're trying to cultivate and turn into Kang. And so I just don't understand how that works. It does not mesh with any version of time travel or paradox law or whatever that I've ever seen. And I'm hoping that Eric is gonna be able to tell us because he's very, very heavily versed in time travel theories. And so I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to come out of this episode feeling better about that episode. Here we go, guys. Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of Loki Season 2, Episode 3. I love this episode. The historical period it took us back to, the stuttering Thomas Edison with Frederick Douglass hair, Victor Timely ended up being, and how horny Miss Smith hits turned out to be. So let's break it down for all the Easter eggs, the clever design choices, and just everything you might have missed. I'm so grateful to all of you for watching these breakdowns, recommending them to your friends, and just giving us your time, because as we learn this episode, time is everything. Okay, the opening yeah. Marvel Studios title card includes a a ragtime version of Michael Giacchino's Marvel fanfare music. <laughs> Oh, weird. That it was Michael Giacchino who first composes. He actually did it for 2016's Doctor Strange. And Giacchino is having a big week right now as his directorial debut, Werewolf by Night, is having a re-release in color. And that amazing production opened with a horror version of the fanfare. Now, ragtime music was popularized by hmm. musicians like Scott Joplin and really hit its peak in the 1890s through the 1910s. It was known for a syncopated or ragged rhythm, the kind of music you would hear accompanying old silent films. But this episode is mostly set in the year 1893, but we actually begin in 1870. 68 decades before a ragtime was right popular. so the episode opens on, on the a weather sacred. vane in chicago the lower third tells us 1868 on the sacred timeline the sacred timeline tells us that we are in the main historical continuity of the mcu and in that continuity there existed a young black man in 1868 who grew up to look just like jonathan majors and thus like all the other kang variants we are not yet on a branch that is formed as a result of sylvie's actions we are in history as it always existed this kid being right here was always part of He Who Remains' scripted plan for the MCU. Now, based on the geography of this scene we later get from the street level, this weather vane is atop the house that young Victor Timely is in. These other structures are shanties topped with chimneys and nothing more, but young Victor wants to know the vector of the wind. 1868 Chicago mm. is an interesting choice of time. Not as interesting as 1893, as we'll see later, but it was three years before the Great Fire of 1871 that wiped out the city, and then three years after the Civil War ended, and after President Abraham Lincoln, who was nominated for the Republican ticket at the the contentious convention held in this same city in 1860 was assassinated in 1865. So as a result of the 1848 opening of the Illinois and Michigan Canal and the first rail line to Chicago opened in the same year, Chicago exploded in population during this point in history, from 4,000 people in 1840 to 90,000 people in 1860, the largest city in the Midwest. Wow. The influx was primarily Irish, Catholic, and German immigrants, but during the Reconstruction era, Black Southerners migrated to Chicago, and the Black population from 1870 to 1890 went from 4,000 to 15,000. And it was all here really in the south side of Chicago. Actually, mm. in this opening shot, you can see some factories billowing smoke into the sky. Assuming this would be the same part of Chicago that would later become the Columbian Exposition, this would be Chicago's south side near Jackson Park, and the south side of Chicago is known for having a history of racial segregation. Why do I know all this? Why do I care about it? Well, my wife's family has its history in the roots of the south side of Chicago, and she mm. and I actually got married on Chicago's south side in the last year. In this muddy wow. street across from Victor's okay. home is an anvil with the sign reading, R.B. Ellis Blacksmith Wheelwright Horseshoeing Wagon Repairs 
Jason Woodward. R.B. Ellis is the name of a Tulsa-based writer, but in Marvel, Warren Ellis obviously is a huge name in Marvel Comics, and the MCU former president Matthew Ellis is actually named after him. So maybe R.B. Ellis could have been Matthew Ellis's ancestor? It seems like R.B. Hmm. is the, the blacksmith who later stares at Renslayer when she arrives. Renslayer steps into this mud, presumably the step she took directly upon leaving the TVA in season one, episode six, in search of free will after Miss Minutes gave her some files, but she didn't give her anything on the origins of the TVA, saying at that time, but I'm downloading the files you need now. This isn't what I asked for. I know, but he thinks this will be more useful. Who? Happy reading. So before Miss Minutes <laughs> tells Renslayer the important person yeah. she's going to meet, she asks if Renslayer brought what she asked. Which is a TVA handbook. Oh, bless your heart, as anyone who has read or watched Sharp Objects can tell you, is kind of a passive-aggressive Missouri way of saying, oh, you're so sweet, but also f*** you. Miss Minutes hints yeah. at some directive she got from He Who Remains. He told me that we need to put this package in that window. This was the plan he made when he knew the end was near for him. This proves that he remains knew that Sylvie was going to kill him and that her doing that was really part of his plan. Perhaps he mm. wanted to clear a path for a different incarnation of himself to take over. Or he just knew that that was the destined end for himself. And his mission now is to reset the cycle, to set up a future he remains to reascend to the top of the TVA, basically to close the loop. Now, this young Victor Timely is just one variant, but who knows? There could be countless other Jonathan Majors doppelgangers throughout history that also got books like this uh. or would receive books like this had Victor Timely not gotten it first. It might have been He Remains to cast a wide net just to see which Kang would survive, to kind of cash all these little versions of himself throughout history, throughout the sacred timeline. Miss mm. Minutes decides to alter appearance to a more classic animation black and white cartoon. They definitely didn't have that in 1868 either. Her round yeah. shoes now have pointed ends and there are actual clock hands on her face. She tells Renslayer, When he's back where he belongs, atop the TVA, you and I will be right by his side. So is this a sincere promise from Ms. Minutes? If there really is a love triangle among these three, it's just not clear if Ms. Minutes ever really wanted to share room yeah. and he remains side. Now, Victor Timely, we see, is at his home and he's doing what? Making candles. Yeah. He pours wax into these molds and we see candlesticks lining the room. It's just interesting that as an adult, he will be seeking ways to replace the Edison light bulb. And as a boy, he is crafting ways to bring light. What altruistic creations this boy might have grown up making had he not been cursed by this book dropping in his window? Now, this mm. book is, of course, just a mere TVA guidebook authored by Ouroboros on every desk in the TVA, like Bibles and prison mm -hmm. cells. But in the hands of an 1868 candle maker, it radiates a shade of orange unseen in this sepia tone neighborhood outside of a ghost clock hiding in a barn. I'm just obsessed with the idea of young Victor being a candle maker. One's reminded of the nursery rhyme, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. Yeah. The pop culture reference here with the book is the sports almanac from the Back to the Future trilogy. Oh, in yes. In part two, that Biff Tannen gets to his younger self to get rich while knowledge is power a book in the wrong hands can be a very dangerous weapon he who remains and all warren kang variants originated in the 31st century let's not forget that that's what he remains said eons ago before the tva a variant of myself lived on earth in the 31st century he was a scientist and he discovered that there were universes stacked on top of his own. Huh. So how does this square with a Kang variant in the 1860s it doesn't. that is also part of the sacred timeline? I think the idea is that he remains set himself a contingency where infant versions of himself from alternate 31st centuries were taken and placed like little Moseses throughout history on the sacred timeline, just waiting in their lives to be activated or not as part of he remains contingency plan. But until they're what? activated, no branch forms. They would just live on their lives as the normal history flows forward. So so onto the TVA's loom room. We actually stay in this state of emergency in a long take shot. We don't edit for over 60 seconds. OB tells mm. them. It's stable right now, but the branch stocks prune are growing back. Now we don't know if these same branch timelines that formed are just resistant to Dox's pruning or if other branches of equal number are just growing in their place. But either way, mm. Dox's bombing didn't work. It didn't help. OB says that he needs to increase the diameter of the loom to boost throughput and clear that knot of unrefined time. For the time oh. string to be knotted just makes you wonder what incursions could be happening on that side of the loom. Mobius suggests we can hack into the system. Having no idea what hacking means, which 
reminds me of that joke <laughs> in Office Space when Michael Bolton says, oh, we should just launder the money, and he doesn't really know what laundering is. Right. So Mobius and Loki travel to 1868 to Victor Timely's neighborhood. Mobius doesn't recognize 1868 as historically significant, but he recalls 1871 fire, but Loki asks, Any major figure arises from here? He asks this literally in front of the open window of Victor Timely's home, mm. the window that Renslayer tossed the book through. We get this fun camera effect where we follow them through the time door. That on the was, other side of that time yeah, door that was, was a dead end wooden wall in the alley. But on the other side of that time door, we now transition to 1893, 25 years later, in the Columbian Exposition of the Chicago World Ranch Fair. The Midway timeline. plays us. Shields and flags representing several different countries line the gateway. The Ferris wheel we see is actually the world's first Ferris wheel, unveiled at this event in history, designed by George Washington Gale Ferris. And the lower third text establishes this as 1893, branched timeline. Aha, I, I an missed important detail. that. So when young Victor Timely was just making candles, that was the sacred timeline. But Victor being given this handbook turned yeah, his life into a, a branch. The plan of for that branch is to lead to a new he remains to inherit the TVA. One innocent, uncorrupted Kang removed from the drama of the 31st century dogpile and the multiversal war, a successor that he remains can trust to carry out his vision of the TVA. So he stole the future versions time, of himself? The city, Edison. H.H. Holmes. Yes, hot air balloons. So the World's Fair was actually a battleground between Thomas Edison's direct current, DC, mm -hmm. and Nikola Tesla's alternating current, the AC system, to power the fair. They called it the Battle of the Currents. Tesla yeah. ended up winning, and he partnered up with Westinghouse to provide fluorescent lighting and dazzle all the attendees of the fair. Meanwhile, he mentions H.H. H. Holmes, who was a notorious serial killer who preyed upon young people who moved to the city for oh, the World's Fair. Yeah. He confessed to killing 27 people, but we don't know if he was just lying because he loved his crazy reputation. Might have been way more than that. It might have been less than that. But he was most famous for a three-story murder castle that was hyperbolized in the newspaper. And I love this. Horrifyingly, the newspaper that they buy on the far right column is an ad for World's Fair Hotel. Oh. And it was put in by, if you see at the bottom of that ad, H.H. H. Holmes for Pride. Wow. And then right beneath that, hilariously, an ad for life insurance. Now, the newspaper wow. shows a sketch of Miss Minutes and lists the date as Friday, June 23rd, 1893. This would actually be two weeks before the final correspondence of one of H.H. H. Holmes' victims, Nanny Williams, which was July 5th, 1893. She and her sister, Minnie Williams, were never seen alive again, and Holmes would actually use Nanny Williams' name in various scams. I am willing to bet that one of uh. these mustachioed attendees with a rounded bowler hat in the background is actually H.H. H. Holmes. Could it be this? This guy on the right, or this guy on the right, or this guy who passes in between Mobius and Loki here. We are gonna find him, murderinos. Now, notice how mm. Loki in this episode wears a bright green tie with this interesting pin clipping it to his shirt. It's just a little flash of gold to remind us of his horned crown, I suspect. Meanwhile, the shirt I am wearing is a Mobius design from our custom merch line inspired by Loki. Grab one of these, it's the best way to support us here at New Rockstars. Nice Get segue, Eric. Right right they pass a newsie. Liberty Bell debut on 4th of July, yeah. Ghost Club. Continues to haunt the Midway. Ghost the Columbian clock. Liberty Bell actually refers to the casting of a new Liberty Bell that was put on display in a replica of Independence Hall, normally in Philadelphia, but here they rebuilt it for the World's Fair. And this new Liberty Bell contained like metals melted down from like all kinds of famous historical relics. Loki and Mobius hmm. shot by a Crackerjack Pavilion in the visit of Norway building with the wooden statues of Odin and Thor and Baldur the Brave. And why'd they include Baldur? No one's even heard of him. Sure they have, Baldur the Brave. Uh, amazing! Baldur the Brave is Thor's brother in Norse mythology and is a figure in Marvel Comics. He was believed actually to have been a part of the cast of the Illuminati in 2022's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, played by Daniel Craig. And we actually saw concept art of this from Daryl mm. Warner. And Baldur's helmet here looks like the helmet from that concept art. In an interview with Josh Horowitz, Daniel Craig played coy about this whole thing. Have you ever heard of the character Baldur the Brave? Uh, no. There was a report, Daniel, yes. that you were going to be in Doctor Strange. Don't you hide behind that mug, I'm Daniel Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thor and Odin oh, interesting. with the six circles as they do in the MCU. So presumably there is a Balder in the MCU and we're going to meet him at some point. The latest trailer footage for the Marvels actually includes a shot of the Bifrost. I called a friend. PG-13. Now, hmm. maybe this is just Thor, or maybe Baldur's big debut is coming sooner than we think. It's probably just Thor, or like Valkyrie or something. Now, as Loki looks at the statue of Odin, we hear this mournful violin theme again. What was that, that 
but it gets cut off by Loki's jealousy of Thor. Then Loki turns Not to see this all. wheeled cage of prize winning black alpine hogs. And this is actually the pen that he will later trap the tall brute inside of. On a sign That's for the funny. Hot Brow Beer Hall, presenting the program of enormous attractions, showcasing tonight singer Ferdinand Lang with a German military band. Ferdinand, oh. you say? Perhaps an ancestor of Scott Lang? Enormous attractions, you say? Then introducing mm. his greatest invention, Victor Timely's astounding temporal marvels. So Victor Timely mm. is one of the personas that Kang adopts when he decides he wants to dominate the 20th century, starting mm. in 1901 in Timely, Wisconsin. This is when he would introduce robotics to American inventors, which is really just a plot to encode all future robots, including Sentinels with a backdoor so that he could take control over them in the future, which would lead to the events of the Kang Dynasty storyline in the late 90s. So this really just looks like a bunch Crazy. of German music acts in a beer hall with a random inventor plugged in the middle. My guess is that Victor took whatever he could get or maybe swindled someone out of their slot. Later in this mm. beer hall, the German band actually he plays is a, a cover of the man. Loki theme music. It's kind of like the disco rendition that we hear in the 1977 era back in season two, episode two. So they spot Renslayer and she's wearing 1893 attire. Actually, Renslayer's name, according to her diploma in the season one finale, was Rebecca Tormine, which is the alias Renslayer uses in the comics when she joins Victor Timely at the turn of the century. So oh. Victor takes the stage. Time is everything. It moves through each and every one of us. Yeah, Jonathan Majors takes these long pauses as if really trying to demonstrate the weight of time to people by taking up as much of it as possible. Later, we learn that Victor actually has a stutter, though, and this yes. might be an elocution tactic to keep himself from stammering. Victor carries a lantern with a candle, a token from his past as a candle maker, and symbolizing his role as an illuminator of ideas, because he later recharacterizes being a con man as being a luminary ahead of his time. We saw mm. a version of the scene in the Quantumania post credit scene as Victor pledges, but perhaps we can shape it and the front lights reveal his face in the apprehensive murmur followed by the baron calling him boy probably isn't lost on this man yeah Unlike no kidding on he remains victor timely is a separate creation something between the con man professor marvel from the wizard of oz and the professorial frederick douglas with that hair you could see his expo here as retroactively a precursor to howard stark's expo in queens in 1943 mm. 50 years from now another display that we saw in that first cat film was dr phineas horton's synthetic man a nod to the original Android form of the Human Torch in the early Marvel comics. Marvel used to be called Timely Comics, it's worth noting. Really? Here. And in Victor Timely's arc in that Marvel annual comic, it's established that Victor mentored Phineas Horton. Now, we don't know if Victor Timely here would have been anything more than a candle maker in the Sacred Timeline without getting that book, but I just like the idea that Victor was a clever enough engineer who could have inspired 20th century inventors throughout MCU history, including the Starks. Victor says, Time is the future of energy. So Victor goes on to dismiss coal or petroleum, saying that the energy of the past, present, and future flows all around them. So Victor saw the designs of the temporal loom in the book and used it as a machine to harness an electrical current out of the flow of time itself. Temporal radiation, he says. Temporal loom. Invert the temporal decay of the electricity flowing through it, lowering its entropy, and gathering mm. it into fine threads of power. Entropy refers to the concept in physics and thermodynamics in which a system will naturally move toward disorder. Entropy yeah. measures the degree of disorder or uncertainty within a system, the degradation of matter and energy in the universe to an ultimate state of inert uniformity as the universe expands and expands and expands. You could see a parallel here with what the sacred timeline is just destined to do. Things are destined to go from order to chaos. So his time-related term for that is temporal decay, which would mean that the flow of time, if it were untouched, would lead to inefficiency efficiencies to friction to incursions and collapse but by threading these he creates an energy source but while the energy source is what he's selling to these viewers here what he's more interested in is kind of the act of looming itself a chaos of particles <laughs> they love the dance transformed into order 
Now, of course, Victor's kind of talking out of his ass. Really, he's just kind of building on Ouroboros' notes that he can't really fully put into practice yet because technology hasn't caught up yet. So really, he's just framing all this in the terms of the latest technology of the era, which would be the light bulb. Victor mm. disses Edison's wattage to light a bulb and promises to light the whole city of Chicago and the entire planet. Actually, if you think about it, this is exactly what Tony Stark will later do with his arc reactor, installing it to power Manhattan with clean energy in 2012's The Avengers. Oh, this yeah. device on the stage here could be based on Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower, which was meant to use the Earth's native electrical charge to power machinery. So maybe instead of Tesla winning the bid to light the World's Fair in this branch timeline, Victor is kind of making the case that he should win the bids to power cities. But really for Victor, this introduction is kind of like a reverse Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project started as a weapons program that later became a way to generate energy. Here, Victor pitches a way to harness energy with the device that will really be used as a weapon of mass destruction by the TVA. Yeah. And the MCU's continuity, the eternal Fastos helped Western scientists develop atomic fission that led to the bombings of Hiroshima and oh. Nagasaki. So an argument could be made that through Victor Timely, he remains is trying to bypass the 20th century nuclear brinkmanship that Fastos steered humanity into. Victor Ooh. shows, If it can be dreamed, it can be achieved. It's worth remembering that according to Multiverse of Madness, all dreams are us glimpsing into the lives of our multiversal selves. So literally, Victor's dreams were him seen through the eyes of his variants, through the eyes of He Who Remains, people who had invented this technology already. He just needed some blueprints in his reality mm. and the tools to physically construct it. Victor's loom ignites with bolts of indigo-colored energy, which is the same color of the sacred timeline in the season one finale yep. and the branches that broke off from it. So Victor may not know it, but we are still seeing his first steps toward weaving that architecture. Mr. Timely, a moment. Please. Of, of, of course. Yes. Here is the first time that we hear his stammer. It's when he sees Renslayer, who many of us have been theorizing might be he who remains female variant. Victor says, Take as many moments as you. Like. Yes, they're beginning the relationship as a transactional one in units of time, which is so appropriate. The robber baron offers Victor mm. a partnership. I don't do partners. And another man with a waxed mustache says, I must have your loom. And Victor says, well, it seems my presentation has piqued much interest. Yeah, we saw the sweaty guy at the bar earlier drinking. So he is Victor's silent partner, Plant. Kind of like Snake Oil yep. Salesman having a guy in the audience being like, no, we have never met before, correct? Victor uses this plant to upbid the robber baron to raise the price. When the robber baron gets to $1,000, Victor gives his partner a look to signal him to back off. And the baron called him a horn swaggler, which is an old timey term for a deceiver. So he actually mm -hmm. might even be wise to what's going on here, but he just wants Victor's text so bad that he doesn't care. From inside Renslayer's purse, Miss Bennett says, It's not my plan, it's his plan. With our help, Hmm. He'll be all he's meant to become. So we can assume yeah. that this part of He Remains plan for Victor Timely to become something of a con man. Like he kind of needs a bit of deception in a variant to be able to do the job. The hmm. tall man with the top hat credited as Behemoth starts the fight with Loki and then Loki turns him into a puff of smoke. The amazing Loki, yeah. everyone. He'll be here all week. But Loki really just teleported him to the hog wagon and yeah. later we hear that explosion outside. Yes, my future. A councilman comes up to Victor to complain about a pair of mechanical trousers that didn't make him taller you look taller to me yeah victor bends his knees and crouches to make himself kind of seem shorter <laughs> to try to deceive this councilman these pants actually might remind you of stilt man from the comics or oh. really it could just be an og iron man suit before tony built one in the cave with box scraps the baron says that the loom is a fake holding up some shorted out circuits it looks like so yes really even though the loom was well intended and seemed to start to be able to do what victor timely dreamt it could do in this case it was all just smoke and mirrors so they chase him past this egyptian temple he remains slash the kang variants do have a history with ancient egypt with the kang variant pharaoh ramatut and he remains having the pyramids and the sphinx in the void in our season one recap series we actually spotted that that sphinx in the void has a nose and it looks like the nose of jonathan majors which kind of reminds me of crash bandicoot 3 when the egyptian tomb levels have a sphinx with a time traveling dr neo cortex's face on it behind the baron there is a figure with a gator head that kind of looks like amit that's yeah. a deity who appeared in moon knight, moon knight. others could be pharaoh ramatut hugo a florida orange juice vendor tosses Victor an orange to throw at the Baron's man. Now there is a Hugo the Great from the 2014 Origin 2 Wolverine Dr. Essex comics who worked at a carnival, but orange does kind of become the color of the TVA. So this might just be the origin of Victor's favorite color. Later we see his bedspread also is the color orange. Victor Interesting. The wheel line, passing some suffragettes. They have sashes and leaflets reading, give us ballots. Victor they want gives the, the Baron the slip by luring him into this crowded carriage on the Ferris wheel and then crawling back out as the gate closes, trapping him on the ride. This is essentially what He Remains does to the people on the sacred timeline. He evades discovery from them and then traps them on this loop where they never really go anywhere. KC and B-15 warn Mobius that Sylvia's approaching and we hear Sylvie's violin music creeping in. But 
All right. You're clearly really good at getting away. Red Slayer yeah. wonders how she tracked them there, but remember, Sylvie has he remains Master Tempad, which would have a greater depth of omniscience of all TVA employees than the other more limited TVA Tempads. Sylvie promised to kill any he remains yeah. variants who would show up, and she tries to make good on her promise here. She charges. If you and the TVA hadn't messed with him, he'd have remained harmless. I like how she says he'd have remained there, but she's right. Presumably, young Victor would have just stayed on the sacred timeline making candles had Renslayer not intervened with the book. Loki says, I, I didn't suppose. give him this book, and yeah. he tosses the book over his shoulder, but Victor doesn't catch it because he's, you know, levitated. But it reminds us of when OB tossed this book I over his shoulder. I thought he death tossed it, it, and Victor he did catch the it. Victor is author of this book. Loki has to break the levitation spell to toss Victor back to the carriage floor to rejoin with the book. Sylvie says, this is all very familiar, isn't it? And Loki holds his hands out in a surrendering pose, kind of like he did when they dueled in season one, episode six. They never really got to resolve that conflict. Sylvie and Loki mm. conjure their green sorcery, but Sylvie's must have been stronger because it's Loki and Victor who are blown back. With the robber baron approaching again, Renslayer unleashes Miss Minutes. <laughs> to the big, yeah. As she grows, From the trailer. Her clock turns into a little skirt, making her look like a giant Pac-Man ghost. As she stomps toward the crowd, dust forms around her steps, and she tears down the flag line, reminding us that she can interact with the physical world. Yeah, Mobius it's so bizarre. Loki to hop on a tandem bicycle. Loki initially turns it down, but later we see them riding it together. Amazing. Between this and Mobius's dream jet ski, I really think Mobius is just a big fan of two-seaters. Let's keep an eye out for what kind of bike Broxton McDonald's Jack pedals home, because I think he and Mobius might be the same person. Check out that video. It's possible. One also thinks the bicycle built for two. The song sung by the evil computer Hal in his dying moments in 2001 A Space Odyssey. I bring it up because I think Miss Minutes is shaping up to be the ultimate villain of the season. Evil AI. Victor takes yeah, Renslayer back to his home and we possible. see storage and signs for a Chinese restaurant which might be for the fair. He seats Renslayer in a refrigerator chair that's right beside the window that she threw the book in through. Victor says that the chair can go down to 40 degrees and it's kind of another parallel to Tony Stark's inventions. Remember after the Iron Man Mark II armor had icing problems he installed heaters and all okay. of his armor including peter's suit and homecoming and in iron man 2 he customized his suit so that he could like get really drunk in it and pee in it miss minute senses a flirty energy between victor and renslayer and gets jealous she redirects the attention back to herself so did you like my performance back there Ooh. bravo mm. <laughs> It was uh, uh, marvelous. He remains called Renslayer quite a marvel on the recording, so calling Miss Minutes marvelous now, you can see yeah. some jealousy forming there. Miss Minutes describes herself, finally. I am a fully conscious and sentient artificial intelligence entity. Yeah, this episode finally begins to shed light on exactly how sentient Miss Minutes is, what she really is, and from that description and her little curtsy here, I assume she might have her own temporal aura, or she could be based on someone's temporal aura, or either way, really, really longs for one. Victor mm. calls for singular and she says you're pretty singular yourself at least you will be some clever wordplay there singular as in you will one day be remarkable but also literally one of a kind as once their plan is reached victor timely will become he remains the one and only kang variant who outlasts the others in the dynasty who have spawned as she mm. talks miss minutes our hand jumps around on her face from the eight o'clock position to the fourth position the way this character kind of jumps around in time it kind of seems like she gets this way when she's nervous renslayer begins to explain okay a long time ago far from now a different time these are the words Miss Minutes used to open her TVA orientation video, long ago, which was a similarly deceptive account. But Renslayer's realizing that these events didn't really unfold in the past or necessarily mm. in the future. Really, they're just all kind of happening at the same time since time is a flat circle. Victor is overwhelmed by Renslayer's explanation. It's like the story of, my, of myself that I always uh, imagined is, is true. Again, if it can be the dreamed, story it can be of myself, Every night when this man dreamt, he saw into he remains life when he was building and running the TVA. Miss Bennett scoffs when Renslayer promises to keep him safe. Even before the TVA or mm. her, you created me. And we work together at the end of time. Miss Minutes dilates her eyes like Puss in Boots to make them huge and adorable. So we learn that Miss Minutes predates Renslayer, at least according to her. She could have been at least part of He Remains downloaded consciousness, like where he stores his darkest secrets. Mm. Victor asks, And you, Mrs. Ms. Ravona. 
Ah, the side eye that Miss Minutes gives her. Ravona. Not only does she pick up Brent Slayer hinting that she's single, I think Miss Minutes takes offense to Brent Slayer using the more modern Ms. M-S to contrast Miss Minutes, M-I-S-S, -S, which is mm. more antiquated. And also makes her name a self-contained pun, as she could be the memories and moments that he remains has missed. Victor calls Loki a wizard yeah. and Moby's his butler. It's just interesting for Victor to consider Loki a wizard when he remains to Loki, was the Wizard of Oz last season. Victor mm. takes them out through a window saying that he does his sales in Chicago, but his lab is across the lake in Wisconsin. Lower taxes. So in the comics, Victor Timely's residence was the town of Timely, Wisconsin. Outside on the street, there is a mm. wagon marked Honey and Honeycomb. Oh, oh. I wonder if it's a beekeeper. Not today. Loki runs after them through the alley and passes a cart. J.W. Taylor's Milk and Cream. They oh, board this wow. steamship, the SS Heron, which is a shout out to Kate Heron, who directed the season one episodes and really gave this series a signature quirk. Victor asks for the usual accommodations, and we see they stow in a lifeboat so Victor, you know, won't have to pay the fare. Victor shows her the TVA guidebook and how he is filled these pages with his own designs and notes. Renslayer takes credit for being the divine hand who dropped the book in his life and notice Miss Minutes at this point starts to creep to the other side of the yeah. lifeboat so that she can be closer to Victor and glare at Renslayer from behind him. We see Ouroboros' photo in the guidebook yeah. and Victor says he respects this man. I really do think OB was the OG, the original He Who Remains. Not necessarily a Kang variant, but I just think he's some kind of a angelic entity who represents time. Victor shows her his design for his throughput multiplier, a term and design that we saw in the closing credits of each episode. It seems to be kind of a flux capacitor keystone piece to make all this technology work. And Renslayer says, I have high hopes for this partnership. Ugh, oh. Wrong choice of words. He pulls away because he doesn't do partners. So he and Miss Minutes cut her loose. Timely's Wisconsin lab is filled with mannequins. Remember, part mm -hmm. of he remains tinkering included the construction of timekeeper androids. So we could be seeing the early steps toward that. The steel buttresses of this room have swirling spiral patterns that kind of look like the windows in the Citadel at the end of time. His chalkboard is filled with equations and designs. I can make out the letters NR. Hey, maybe a new rock star shout out. Yeah, so, definitely. Probably not. But there is a donut shape, which could be his early brainstorming of the sacred timeline. I just like how above this board is a row of clocks, which reminds me of Doc Brown's workshop in Back to the Future, which was filled with clocks. Victor lifts his throughput multiplier, and we see that it's a series of gears and cogs linked together in a sphere. Kind of reminds me of the Antikythera. That's the mechanism attributed hmm. to Archimedes and the central MacGuffin in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny that came out earlier this year. Also had to do with time travel. Now the fat end of his loom construction that's on the table beneath the windows kind of looks like an arc reactor, which would make sense because Victor pitched this device as a clean energy mm. generator the way Stark viewed his reactor to be. Miss Bennett starts to make a move on Victor. In her black and white form, she turns orange, but she blushes to begin the saturation. And the gesture she makes with her hand is kind of like she's flirtily brushing her hair out of her eyes. Miss Bennett mm -hmm. says that he remains created her before the war, before the TVA, just an AI to play chess with, and then gave her autonomy to write her own programming. Actually, John Carpenter's The Thing is the next video analysis we're doing on the Deep Dive channel, and it opens with McCready playing chess against a female voice computer, and it doesn't end well. Another parallel between He Remains and Tony Stark as well. Tony invented true AI with Ultron and that AI turned against him. We learn that Miss Minute's real interest in this reset mm -hmm. version of He Remains is the hope that he might actually give her a, her a body. body. If I had a body. We could truly lead together. Why does Miss Minutes want to be confined to a physical body? If she's clearly more powerful as a ghost in the TVA machine, it's clear that she just longs for a physical touch. And I think this tells us that she misses having a mortal shell that she might have once been a corporeal human, that she could just be a floating temporal aura. Either way, she misses having the ability to measure her life in minutes, Miss Minutes. He remains, I think, might have based her personality on some temporal aura of someone, maybe Renslayer, or this could just be a detached temporal aura itself. Either way, based on this episode and how Victor Timely is mostly a harmless con man so far, I think Miss Minutes is being set up as the primary villain of the season. Yeah, I She's think definitely been the most terrifying possible. thing on the show in several occasions. Like right here, when she projects her face on the head of a mannequin, and just doing this causes her face to gl glitch, so that when she flirtily winks, it's not that noticeable because it's buried in all these other involuntary twitches. Miss Minutes bending her shape like this and trying Weird. to be a human is just not good for her programming. She leaps under the table to stop him from minimizing her and it's scary, but on her last, I love you, we see her hand clawing at his face and his glasses start to go up. Because remember, Miss Minutes can affect the physical right. world. She clawed at his face. Renslayer fires Ooh. up a weapon. Still a, uh, uh, oh. 
photo type, quite un unstable. Yeah, this is an early pruning stick, but since it's unstable, we don't know what it will do to people. Like when she sticks the mannequin, no. it doesn't exactly make the same rainbow colored slow prune that pruning sticks normally cause. This is faster and ashier. Mobius and Loki arrive while Ravona, or mm -hmm. Vaughn, as Mobius adorably calls her, uh. pulls this glowing orange thread to Victor. Loki holsters some glowing green energy from his palms. So again, there's that orange mm. versus green color scheme. While most things in this nostalgic setting have been desaturated and sepia toned, it's just interesting how the outside wizardry, whether it's through technology, your sorcery is bright orange or bright green. Renslayer says, All that matters is order versus chaos. I'm order. Right after this, I am order. The workshop, as if to say, and I'm chaos. Victor begs, I haven't done anything. No, oh, you will. You'll do terrible mm. things. Sylvie finds herself in the kind of baby Hitler dilemma, killing right. someone to prevent what they'll do in the future. Like Sarah Connor going after Miles Dyson in T2, Cable attacking the kid in Deadpool 2, Bruce Willis targeting that kid in Looper, and what Rhodey proposed to do to Thanos. But this is also the justification TVA used to arrest Sylvie when she was a girl. I think her realizing the injustice of that is yeah. why Sylvie can't bring herself to kill him, because it's not fair to judge someone by the actions of their variants. You don't know the, the heart, the heart I, I have beating in my chest and the stutter makes him more endearing it's too my own choices sylvie tells renslayer that if all she wants is a seat at the end of time be careful what you wish for because the one sitting in that seat is destined to rot in it sylvie uses he remains master tempad to open a door back to the citadel at the end of time which we see has and crumbled boot into her through it. ruin remember the concept of this building was for it to have cracked kintsugi patterns that the whole thing would be carved out of the rock of this asteroid but now we learn that these cracks trace a kind of fault line for these real fissures to follow like it was this place's destiny to crumble he remains corpse remains seated there right uh, yes see gross stands melted down like is every variant of he remains in the candle making we see there's a triangular shape on the floor with a word in it this was actually part of the set in season one episode six it was just kind of hard to make out but here we see it is a latin term epistulus reminding us oh. of the latin that translated to for all time always on the floor of the lobby so ab epistulus referred to the chancellor's office in the roman empire responsible for the emperor's correspondence sending instructions to all the local governors this is in a way the function of this particular chamber it's where he remains would write the script for the sacred timeline and send instructions to the tva renslayer oh. brings back up miss minutes love you Oh, Miss Minutes was completing her sentence right when yeah, the she was her off, suspended. But she accidentally professes a bit of sisterly love to Renslayer. Because Miss Minutes says, Well, it was foolish of him to make an enemy out of someone who knows all his secrets. Damn. Uh, Miss Minutes says that she knows a dirty, dark secret about Renslayer. I assume that secret is going to be the recording that we heard back in the season two premiere. That Maybe. That had promised Renslayer that they would be partners. I think we're going to learn that Renslayer might have been that fourth statue that was broken in the lobby. And remember, there is a barricaded region of the Citadel that I pointed out in my deep dive of season one. And right. I actually just realized that it was designed into the blueprints of the set by Kazra Farhan who directed this episode that could have been part of the citadel that was the love nest of he remains in the renslayer when they were happy together okay a few updates to the closing credits okay we see miss minutes is in cartoony black and white now when she was in color in previous end credit sequences mm. we see the stage at the world's fair beer hall that has victor's loom on it and then the casting photos show renslayer with a prototype pruning stick victor timely is an adult victor is a kid making candles sylvie and loki and mobis at the world's fair and wait a minute who's that man on the right behind him is that H.H. Uh, Holmes? We got him! To me, this episode had everything. <laughs> Chicago history, Balder the Brave, great music, oh, great time travel logic, and finally, some details on Miss Minutes. I'm loving this season, and thank you to all of you folks for watching these breakdowns and showing us so much love. Please support us by grabbing some of our exclusive Loki-inspired merch at nerdriot.shop. Subscribe to all three channels of the New York Stars Network. Thank you to Noah Chen for helping me write this breakdown. Follow me at EA Voss, and I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Well... I love the little details and I feel like the, uh, I feel like the H.H. H. Holmes character, um, was, I feel like there was a plot line in some Doctor Who episodes where Doctor Who and his companions went to the 1893, uh, World's Fair and encountered and, and got stuck in that, you know, uh, murder mansion or whatever they, they wanted to call it. Um, so I, I feel like that was something that I was aware of through another IP that involved time travel, which is very odd. Um, but I still don't feel like 
I fully get where we're going. He could be right that the the variants that are on the sacred timeline he, they could have come Kang could have kidnapped his own future variants kids future variants as kids and deposited them elsewhere in the sacred timeline to prevent them from growing up in their own branch but I feel like by doing that he just made it so that there were more Kang variants available and if there's more than one there's more than one but even just this one and his plan to give this king variant the information he needs to dismantle or build the tva i mean that book is gonna be very pivotal and giving that book to a king variant is irresponsible to say the least um because he, he could use it to destroy the TVA just as easily as he could use it to build stuff to create the TVA. And if we're meant to think that Victor Timely literally is the same Kang that traveled in time through the sacred timeline and ended up at the end of time to be he who remains, it's a literal impossibility that the reason he can become that person is because he was given information about how the, the guidebook that was written much later because the TVA gets created because of this guy it's it's self-referential it can't happen it's literally the the type of thing the paradox that breaks all time travel concepts the the thing that destroys universes um because they occur that that type of thing can't happen or it destroy you know it's like meeting yourself in an you know that kind of thing where you go back in time and you run into yourself uh, and you you it, it it's supposed to destroy timelines or i don't know there's so many different versions of time travel and paradox and and what have you that it's i still just don't understand how this plot was meant to do what it's meant to do and the fact that miss minutes seemingly was jealous that was the vibe i was getting while watching the episode seemingly she was jealous and she was trying to move in on renslayer with timely and in fact convinced him to boot her off the ship even um that means that not only is she a self-aware fully conscious self-autonomous ai but that she has more than logic. She has feelings and all of these other things. And um, she is the tool that he who remains chose to ensure that his plan would come to fruition. It just, maybe she's the bad guy. Maybe she's the reason all of this is happening. Maybe it's a story about the horrors of AI and rogue AI destroying the world i don't know and i don't feel like they've i still don't really feel like they've given us enough details in show in universe here in camera for us to know what's going on and it's just still super super confusing i do really appreciate bringing out these little details but none of those details I and mean, we got dozens of them but none of them furthered the plot. When we've got a murderer, a, a serial murderer around the time of the World's Fair, that has nothing to do with our plot. We have Victor Timely as a con man. Does that have something to do with our plot? I don't know. We we have the, um, the electricity wars between Edison and Tesla. 
Does that have something to do with the plot? Uh, Victor Timely trying to use the forces of time to generate electricity to, to run the world. I don't know. It does the, is the TVA a, a power utility? I don't think it is. Um, so none of it seems to directly apply to where this show is going. They're interesting, they're fun, but they seem irrelevant. And that's the thing that's really killing me. Um, I hope we get more solid clues in episode four for Loki because they're they're losing me in the plot. I love the characters. I love the storytelling. I absolutely adore Tom Hiddleston. Um, and Mobius is amazing. Um, I just I just don't see where they're going with all of it. And uh, I want it to go somewhere cool to have a payoff. Ugh. Well, um, thank you so much to new rock stars for the work that they do, taking this frame by frame by frame and looking at all these things, doing the background research. It's just amazing. And I appreciate the, that I get to benefit from it without having to do the work that they do. That's top notch stuff. Um, if you're not already a subscriber for new rock stars, they have three channels for you to choose from. Go pick one or hit all three. Their content is wonderful. Thank you guys so much for sticking around, for watching with us and following along in our journey. If you have a better clue of what's going on than I do, let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.